Alrighty, well, that was uh, the interview with Ellie Beth, and if you want to catch the full interview, remember you can um, you can see that on our YouTube forward slash B the B Radio. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, really interesting stuff that both of you talk about. Really good interview, I thought. Thank you. Yeah, it's yeah, she's great, and and the uh, the, the short film is just twelve minutes, and I really really suggest anybody to just go on YouTube and search Truth Takes Time and just hit that little animated link that you'll see. Uh, not, well, it's not animated, but it's a graphic. Now I have a question. At the end of the interview, uh, yeah. you asked about the sequel and Ellie said, no, uh, real quickly. Uh, uh, then she ended up mentioning there was something about a, a book. book. Yeah, A book. There's a book called Nevada that um, uh, is written by Imogen, Imogen Binney, and uh, she's a part of this trans group on the internet that I'm a part of, and we okay. will be trying to do maybe an interview with her as well, but Great. until then, I'd love to just advertise our book, uh, Nevada, you can go pick that up in stores. Absolutely. Very nice. Well, thank you for the interview, Erin. I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, we have uh, three. We've kind of narrowed it down. Every week, there's so many things to talk about, and I have three things uh, here uh, that, that we're interested in talking about this week. Um, but first, I just want to mention something kind of funny on the side. Uh, this is the second Tuesday in a row where I wake up in the morning and I go to the shower, and there's a large brown spider at the bottom of the bathtub. I haven't, I haven't told Ari this yet, so I'm looking at Ari's face with surprise <laughs> now. Uh, well, it horrifies me knowing that I was in the shower right after that. I took care of the problem, if you will. I just don't know if it's a wolf spider versus a brown recluse, and everyone out here is like, well, it's going to have a violet. I'm not going to get that close to look. Yeah. I'm not going to No, it's a brown spider looking at me, and it looks angry. Right. So anyways, uh, that being said, we did narrow down our um, kind of three topics here, uh, two of which are very local, I think, uh, interesting points to talk about. So the first one is, these are all linked on our Facebook right now. Again, facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Binary. What beyond, was that, Aaron? Oh, it was Beyond the Binary. The Binary, great. Now, the first one is a brand new uh, policy out of the Student uh, Recreation Center, the SIU Rec Center. Yeah. Uh, and other campuses across the US uh, have similar policies, a little bit different. If you're at another university, I would love to hear what your university is like, um, how they, quote, deal with gender variant people. Uh, this policy is called, it's, it's a family changing room, and it was, quote, created to accommodate families who are interested in using the, uh, the student rec center pool who need a private place separate from the men's and women's locker rooms to assist their children as well as gender variant people and people with disabilities who have assistance of another gender. All together, yeah, just one big huge families, uh, disabled people, and trans, or uh, not trans, but gender variant here in one big category. We'll put you in a room. Critiques aside, I mean, it is such a, a great thing that they're doing. Absolutely. Uh, Hands down, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful thing. And I'm really happy about it because I want to use the rec center. And we've been talking about this and waiting for it. You've been on the show. Mm -hmm. So this is great news. But yes. I mean, it, there's always going to be something to criticize, and yes, and it's and it's still uh, worth criticizing. Sure, you know? and and if any if you're in any of those categories and you want to access this, the site says it's going to be room 95, uh, located on the pool deck, which is uh, you can access through either the men or women's locker room uh, onto the pool deck. So. I'm not exactly, we haven't gone to see it ourselves yet. I was part of a focus group that talked about this, so now it's an official announcement, it's happening. Right. Uh, and then the actual uh, Room 95 is going to be open during regular open swim hours only, which also leads me to believe what about uh, those gender variant, even disabled bodies as well, uh, whether you, you're both of these categories or one or the other, being trans or disabled. Um, what if you're not there to swim, but you want to use this facility to change outside of the swimming hour? So that's a question that kind of comes to mind, right? Like a late night run, for instance, on the track. Sure, yeah. uh, so that's something to consider, maybe even the two of us getting in contact to ask those questions. But there's a couple other things that I find very peculiar about this, uh, the policies and procedures. It says that the use is restricted to families with children 11 years of age and younger, gender variant people and people with disabilities who have assistance of another gender. I'm not sure, though, how many people are allowed in this room at one time. 
and I'm not sure what it means to be a gender variant person to be in a changing room with a parent and their children. <laughs> Might be a little awkward. It could be a little awkward turtley. Awkward turtle a little bit. Yeah. And um, I, I, I mean, just even going down here, it says that children 12 and older must use the gender appropriate locker rooms. And it makes me think, what? 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 <laughs> uh, I think it becomes a little counterintuitive. And so I feel like they still need a little work on some other language, perhaps. And that's not to say that we don't have to be part of that. I know that. Uh, what is the appropriate? Yeah, the appropriate. It sounds a little I don't know. And it makes me think, like, yeah. even the word appropriate makes me think, who's policing this, right? Is it going to be a cisgender person or a non trans person who's going to be policing, like, hey, you're not in the gender appropriate locker room, little 13 year old? And I, I, have a, I have a lot of issues with that as well. Um, and also it says that there's going to be a key. Uh, you have to check out a key with a valid photo ID from the equipment desk. And again, I don't know how the employees are going to be trained in terms of what an appropriate ID looks like, especially if you're in the throes of transition and you have an old photo and you look completely different. Oh, gosh. These are definitely some problems. I think what excites me, though, about this, <coughs> next to... Uh, you know, the potential problems that we're pointing out. Yeah. Uh, which we'll probably do our own figuring out, I suppose. You know, it's just exciting in general knowing okay. that I can now go into a, the rec center and at least feel comfortable knowing that they, they're aware that there are trans people that might come in. Yes, and, and, and to be sure, <laughs> yeah. right, we mentioned this, I think, on a couple weeks ago, the rec centers who approached the LGBT Resource Center about this, right. they're the ones who wanted to change it. And so, props. So many, oh. Yeah, props to them. I think that's great. But there are questions remain. But I think the questions are what help better the policies. Right, this is just the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, rough transition with the time, if, if, if we can. Is that okay? Let's rough transition. Let's do it. Rough transition. Oh, neat. I like that. We're going to start using that word. What are you doing? I'm in rough transition. I don't know what that means. Um, so uh, this past week, news came out about the University of Illinois at the Chicago campus. Yes, University U of I at Chicago. Uh, the trustees, the Board of Trustees have changed the student health plan uh, at the Chicago campus only to cover se uh, uh, sex change surgery or uh, sometimes called sex reassignment surgery, uh, gender, gender confirmation, confirmation surgery. surgery. All of these surgeries that deal with some form of uh, gender variant, sex variant, uh, uh, realignment in some capacity. So, yeah. and, and of course, we have this kind of conservative backlash that says, well, heaven forbid that I would have to pay for somebody else's issue. As if to say that's not how the commons work, that that's not how the money that goes in works and functions. And yeah. some of the pushback I've already had from and, and bringing this up is there's folks who say, well, well, University of Illinois, it's a big university. It's nothing like SIU. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? I, I want to talk about this real quick. So the change at University of Illinois, as I understand it in the press releases, uh, is that the fee increase for students for their insurance plan, which might I add is a more comprehensive insurance plan, which we do not have here at SIU, yeah. is that it will cost the University of Illinois Chicago students $922 a year. Okay, $922 a year. And that will, that's a 15% increase, which now includes SRS. Now, let's do a cross comparison to this very expensive, that's the way it's supposed to be, school, to SIU. <clears throat> Currently, or I should say the last year, uh, the cost per semester for our insurance fee, and the insurance might I add for students, uh, does cover a little bit, but certainly does not cover A, a lot, and B, certainly does not cover SRS or any form of, of sex, sex change, change surgery, surgery right? right? And so the cost here at last year was $626 a year. Sure, a lot cheaper. Right. A lot cheaper. Okay. Didn't cover. Now the fee increase that the Board of Trustees at SIU has recently suggested will raise the fees at SIU by 2016, the year 2016, to $980 oh dear. a year. Okay. That doesn't include summer. That doesn't include SRS. That doesn't include, that's more money that we're now paying for a new insurance, and this will be a new insurance plan that allows us to broaden it out as students at SIU, which we need certainly. Right. But SRS, to my knowledge, still hasn't been assessed. And so what I'm saying is, any argument that says, well, U of I is a big, expensive school, of course they're going to be. No, it's unacceptable to me. It really is. Because at the same time, hey, it, sh I mean, it should be accessible, period. I, I, I am a firm, I don't know about you, Aaron. 
I don't know about listeners out there. I am a firm believer in surgical intervention on demand. Sure. Absolutely. If you want it, you need to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And this notion that somehow that's a school that costs more and therefore that's why they can do it, I just, I, I don't buy it. Because right. then you have these smaller schools like SIU where we pay more than even the big schools and we get far less resources. What, what sucks is like a lot of people are, are don't understand this surgery and why it's so necessary and they see it as like a cosmetic choice or whatever. Absolutely. And absolutely. And you know, th from time to time, we kind of also get these stories about uh, folks who are in prison uh, who are trans and begin their transition uh, in, in prison, um, often yeah. because some prison systems have what we might call like socialized medicine in some way, so to speak, certainly not socialized in the most traditional sense, but in terms of access, right? And then people get up in arms of how dare they use my taxpayer money that way, which makes no sense to me, right? It, it's this notion of, well, you're messed up. Why should I have to pay for your issue? As opposed to, it's it's just like all sorts of medical uh, interventions that we deal with. Yeah, why are, why are we any different? Absolutely. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I find it interesting. We pay for all kinds of things. No, uh, that's, that's really interesting. And it just, it baffles me. That yeah. People don't understand uh, what's already happening. Um, <laughs> yeah, the ball's already rolling. The ball is already rolling. So, uh, catch up. Trans people just want to be a part of the ball. Uh, is that the rough transition? I guess so. Great. Plus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, uh, with our remaining time, we kind of want to, I know we're just rushing through all these stories, but these are three relatively large stories this week that kind of came up. So the rec centers, family changing room, yeah. University of Illinois' announcement that their 15% fee increase will, uh, bringing the fees for them up to 922 a year, does not include summer to my knowledge, uh, will now include uh, sex change surgery. Uh, also, the critique that SIU's fee increase will not include SRS, and we will still pay more. So there's there's an interesting thing, uh, which now brings us to our final story. Before we get oh, to, you know to the warrior princess, are, are we going to talk at all about Shazal? Um, I mean, I mean, we we could if, if you wanted to. Um, just just briefly. Sure. Well, I mean, sh sh go ahead. Well, 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 how about we we do this story first, and if we have time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, Warrior princess. That's fun. Um, so, um, it's been reported recently. Uh, the story that I'm drawing on right now is uh, on Salon.com, and essentially, the, well, here's the heading: Seal Team Six veteran comes out as transgender. Now, this particular soldier, her name is Kristen Beck. Uh, she was a SEAL for 20 years and a member of what's called SEAL Team 6, quote, the unit that killed Osama bin Laden. Oh. Right. Uh, now, on this story, it's not a picture of Kristen. No, no, no. Of course not. It has to be media representation. So what do we have here? Go ahead and describe that picture of Kristen Beck for me. <laughs> what does she look like? Looks like it was uh, Kristen before transition. <laughs> a rough transition. Before the rough transition. Apparently. Yeah, they're using the, uh, the photo of her um, from before, of course, to right. create that. So what we have here is Chris Beck, right? Because, he I mean, we have media representation of trans people where they just can't let go of this past. I'm sure she's, Ugh. I don't, I wonder how she feels about seeing old pictures of herself. I mean, I, it, she seems proud of what she's been through. It's unfortunate that... Uh, the media has to represent her in uh, absolutely. still I, that shocking way. Yes, I, I mean, I, I yes. And, and, I, and I want to be clear, like, she, she's the one who's engaged in these discussions. There has been a little pushback already from a few people on uh, various Facebook channels that are saying, like, well, maybe it's difficult to find pictures. No, 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 she's part of the media releases here. Right. She has her pictures as Kristen Beck. The media is choosing to show before and after pictures as though it's like a talk show, daytime show of, look what we did to these people. And it's just absolutely uh, crazy to me. Right. Um, I, it, yeah, the media doesn't necessarily contact uh, the person they're talking about. They'll just sort of, you know, divvy up their own thing and, and throw it out there. And absolutely. And end up with these sort of offensive 
articles, especially regarding trans people, this is not the first offense. Yeah, I mean, the thing that kind of comes to mind is the very traditional uh, framing of trans people as never being, always being in process, never complete. And I think of the opening of the film Trans America, where we have the main character who focusing on the voice. Well, yeah, it's the oh, so it's the voice training, <laughs> right? So she's never complete. She's always in process. She's not right. a woman who right. I and mean, and that's thinking, and that's part yeah. of this ongoing narrative, like that right. a trans person is still broken, always being fixed, and it's completely offensive. It's uh, offensive. Not to mention, uh, we have to mention like the U.S. imperialism that kind of gets forward to here. That even even a trans person can kill terrorism. Oh God! Even a trans person can be part of this, and that's a deeply problematic component of like this whole the whole notion of repeal of don't ask, don't tell. So there's this notion of discrimination is institutionalized, trans people don't fit the repeal of DADT, don't ask, don't tell, and yet still, uh, there are these larger kind of struggles. Um, well, okay, we went through a lot, and unfortunately our time has come to an end. Right. Now yeah. is the time to say goodbye to all our company. Definitely. Um, so, what do you want to say? Say your goodbyes. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys next week on Tuesday. Yes, thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Bar Binary on WDBX 91.1 FM, community radio for Southern Illinois.